Future Proof is sponsored by Learn Smart Academy, online revision courses for GCSE and A-Level. All your revision in one place, organised for you, interactive and game-changing. Welcome back from the break. Thank you so much for joining me, Sarah Hopwood. Future Proof this programme, looking at sharing some skills and sharing some knowledge. And today I'm looking at how to become or how to be a, an effective speaker, which is actually about communication as well. And in the first half, I was talking about from anything from standing at a celebration and talking to addressing just a small team of people to, of course, nowadays, many, many people are committing their presentations on video and uh, there are more video clicks than anything else on the web so it very much is the way forward so this is for leaders in business but this is also for rising stars and people just setting out so even from CVs for example you know we should be actually um, putting in, handing in video CVs to support perhaps a document as well. So, you know, you, you can't underestimate the power of being able to speak confidently. And I opened up this whole program saying 70% of the whole bundle is around preparation. And that's kind of what we're talking about now. So going into the break, I talked about the gap analysis and just finding where you need to get some training, get some specialist help, or maybe just some research, and also maybe Google some vid videos. So find where the biggest gap is. So one of these is, um, for example, on knowledge, the ability to knowledge transfer, and maybe Google on YouTube, how to knowledge transfer. There's so much there that can help you. So once you've done the gap analysis, you know where you need to really focus your training. You also need to think about the presentation environment. Now, this is really getting a full overview of who's in the room. So because I work in the cruise industry, what's come to mind straight away is, for example, a cruise that's leaving for, let's say, um, I don't know, three months. You know, the captain of the ship and certainly the cruise directors and others will want to know who is on board. And also they want to make sure, because everybody's paid a lot of money to be on that ship, that everybody has a lovely time. And that is how you research, if that's the right word, to find what is needed to create a very good presentation environment. So, for example, the cruise industry, they will look at names, they will look at ages and needs. There's things on, there's forms that people complete about special needs that they might need support in different areas. Obviously, the kitchens are busy with dietary stuff and all that. And without being funny, and I know it's not the same as a ship, but it's the same sort of thing when you are preparing to speak. So I will always research what sort of audience it's going to be. Um, and the company secretary, I usually have very good conversations with that person and obviously the person who engages you. In fact, I have a template form that is handed in that needs to be completed, which will give me a better idea of who is in the room. I then also want to see the room. And by seeing it, I'm looking at color, I'm looking at light and particularly what time of day am I presenting and where where would it, uh, perhaps a video or a PowerPoint, where would it be? You know, is it going to be blasted by daylight or something that could ruin it? And also look at um, the, the comfort of the chairs, the heating, to getting the spectrum to make sure that there are no chairs that are put behind pillars or too wide that the people sat on the periphery can't see what's going on. So it really is about, if you like, sniffing around and just finding every aspect of care that is needed. Make sure there's water available for people who are thirsty. Make sure that people know, for example, from health and safety to where the loos are, all that kind of stuff. Yes, the event organiser should do it, but I always make sure it is my business that I know these things as well. Planning your seating can depend on how long you're speaking for, the content and how interactive the presentation is. There are many different ways from sitting around tables, sitting behind tables, sitting in semicircles, sitting in one big semicircle. There are many, many different ways of doing it. Um, for me, I would just, you know, as I say, go in, look at the room, think of your presentation, think how much you want them to engage and work with each other and, you know, see facial expressions off of each other and what have you. And that will really help you work out 
what seating plan you want and also what um, numbers are coming in the room and obviously how you can house those numbers because we all know health and safety is very very important this is ongoing consideration and this really is just making sure that whoever is in the room however clear their vision is however good their hearing is um, and you know any other if you like health and well-being um, uh, issues, want to a better word, or considerations, not issues, just make sure that you consider every single one. And it's it takes time sometimes, so maybe go and ask, you know, even reception, you know, when other people have presented here, what sort of questions have you been asked? You know, you can ask anybody and they might say, oh, actually, funny you should ask. I had some a lot in last week and they asked me this. And then you go, wow, thank you. Can I ask the same question? You know, so don't try and do it all on your own. Really kind of pull in the brains around you and that will really, really help. So in these last few minutes, I want to finish this first program on presentation skills, looking at the seven learning principles. And these are, oh, with homeschooling, with education as it is, as well as the speaking world, if you understand the seven learning principles, it can really, really help you be a more effective teacher and leader as well. So feedback is really important and, you know, kids will tell you from school and staff, you know, staff above a certain wage, stop losing focus on the salaries. Thereafter, reassurance and endorsement and encouragement and opportunities for growth, that's more important to them often. And they'll move jobs to go and find it if you're not giving it to them. So really, really powerful. And when you're speaking, um, you, you can feed back to the audience as to how they are doing. You can encourage them to engage with you. So that's whether or not they're answering questions directly, whether you're asking rhetorical questions, but when you see a nod or a smile or somebody looking up and considering something that you've said, pick it up and feed back. You don't have to say anything necessarily, but you can gesture towards them and nod with them. And other people will see what's going on and they'll think, oh gosh, what? there's an interaction going on there, what's that? And all that helps make it sticky so that people, others will join that engagement. Active learning, that is really important about almost, and questions can do that. So when you're being told something and if you like hammered with information all the time, it, you, you start zoning out and you can switch off. So it's quite good to put in something like a question I can ask you. Can you think of the last time you were asked to speak in any way, shape or form and you were just completely frozen with fear? Can you remember that? How long ago was it? Who was with you? Um, did it? Did you kind of walk away from it or did you actually push forward through that fear? That just now is like active learning. But it's also maybe giving them and saying, so what would you do? I've been talking about this, that and the other. So what would you do if I gave you a pot of brown and yellow? What would happen? And, and, it's, and that is the way of, of getting people almost to do it in their heads. Reinforcement, so that's re, that's uh, sometimes if somebody's answered something, you repeat those words back, so it's an endorsement, it's a reinforcement of what has been said. Giving them meaningful learning material. That's why we have people who need, for example, PowerPoint. They need handouts or they need something to hold as an example of what you're being, uh, or what's being talked about. Um, that's why sometimes speakers will throw things into the audience or have things under the chair or change some of those visuals. They'll also have the music and the noise and the sound effects. So really important that there is supporting um, meaningful material. But that also ties up with using senses. We have five senses. Many speakers know that having percolated coffee in the back of a room will really enhance the environment so that people will feel more relaxed. They feel um, at home, a bit like Christmas music in you know, shops. They know that that can increase the level of spending because it's something that resonates with the people who are hearing or being exposed to that sensory stimulus. Overlearning. I was always taught that as a speaker, just think of one main point. So for me, my main point is 70% of being a good speaker is spent in preparation. If you're not prepared to spend 70%, 
preparing and getting a speech ready, you are already programming yourself to not deliver your best. And so if I had one point, then what I is, is through all my content, I would keep coming back and repeating it or saying it in a different way, but endorsing it. And the last thing is always remember primacy and recency. People remember what you started off with. So make sure you start off with a very good, strong opening to your presentation. And recency, people always remember the last thing that you said. They generally just mix up the grey bits in the middle. But if the primacy, the first thing you say, and the last thing that you say makes sense, then the bits, the grey areas that they um, build up in the middle, usually get quite close to what you were saying because the beginning and the end was so strong. So make sure your one key point is made at the beginning and it's made at the end. Good luck.